Hey y'all, have you ever heard of a kolache? Kolaches? Kolach? I don't know how they're pronounced, but they are a Texas favorite brought over by Czech immigrants a long time ago. They are beloved in Texas and for good reason. When I first bit into my gluten-free version, I thought, have I ever made anything as good as this in my life? That's how insanely good these little pastries are, y'all. So let's get into it and I'll show you how to make them. We're of course gonna start with my sweet dough recipe because you know, it's the foundation of many, many things on my blog. If you've made it already, just skip on to the next step. If not, here's the list of ingredients you'll need. And y'all, it's just as simple as putting everything in a bowl, mixing it, covering it, letting it proof, and then refrigerating it overnight. Easy peasy. So my dough is in the fridge right now, but before I grab it, I'm gonna make the cream cheese filling. I've got eight ounces of cream cheese in this bowl, one egg yolk, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and a quarter cup or 50 grams of sugar. And I'm just gonna mix this together until it's smooth. And I'll put this aside for now and make the streusel. What I love so much about these little pastries is they're very customizable. You can make them into nearly any flavor you can think of and add or get rid of toppings along the way. I'm going full on all toppings, y'all, because you know that's how I roll, right? <laughs> so in the bowl, I've already measured out one and a half cups or 300 grams of granulated sugar and one cup or 140 grams of Kim's gluten-free all-purpose flour blend. And I'm cutting up a stick or 113 grams of cold butter. I'm also gonna sprinkle in just a dash or two of cinnamon for a little flavor kick. And of course, in true Kim fashion, I picked too small of a bowl, so let me go grab a larger bowl, y'all. In my effort to reduce my dirty dishes, I end up making more of a mess to clean up. Luckily, my husband really helps me a lot with doing dishes. He's, he's my employee. <laughs> I'm just taking the cold butter and cutting it into the sugar and flour, just using my fingers until it's created like a streusel of sorts. I think this is called posipka, I think, something like that. Whatever you call it, it brings a little crunch to the tops of the kolaches and they really need it because they're so soft otherwise. And I'm not complaining about that softness. <laughs> I'm just saying that crunch is perfect on top. But again, you can customize them, do away with the streusel, whatever you want to do. When I visited my sister in Texas a few years back, we were walking through one of the grocery stores and I saw kolache in the bakery. They looked so freaking good, y'all. They were different though than I thought kolache were supposed to be. I thought they were these little round things, almost like a Danish, but really the ones in Texas were huge because, you know, everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> Did anyone's kids watch SpongeBob? I always think of Sandy Squirrel when I think of Texas. All right, this looks good. It's like little nuggets. It makes way more than you'll need for this recipe, but you can freeze it and put it on anything that requires a streusel. I'll just pop this in the fridge until I'm ready to use it. And I'll go ahead and grab my dough too. This is just half of a regular sized recipe of my sweet dough. I'm gonna divide this into 12 pieces that are roughly 55 to 60 grams each. You don't have to be perfect, but I do like to use a scale cause I am horrible at eyeballing it y'all. I'll just shape them into tight rolls. Y'all have seen me do this many times on other videos. Start with a floured area and kind of pull up the outsides and fold it into the center and then pinch the top and then you flip it over and then make sure to shape them on an unfloured part of your surface so you get that friction. I've got a quarter sheet tray here, which is actually the same as a nine by 13 pan. So if you don't have a quarter sheet tray, just use a nine by 13 baking dish and I've buttered it heavily so that these don't stick and have no problem coming out. Okay, I'm gonna cover these loosely with plastic, but I did not get this on film, I don't know why, 
but I forgot about it after I put the plastic on, but take your palm and flatten them to about a half inch thickness before you cover them with plastic. And then we'll let these rise until doubled in size. And this is what they'll look like. I've got a little bit of melted butter here. It's like two tablespoons or what is that? I think that's like 15 grams or something. <laughs> and I'll just liberally brush it all over the tops. I tried several different methods for getting the filling in these and finally just settled on using my fingers. So I'm just taking like two fingers from both of my hands and gently pressing down into the center to create a well. And this also degasses the center, but not the outer edge. You want a substantial well to fit all that yummy filling. When I first made them, Scott and I, my husband Scott, and I both agreed they needed more filling. So this was the method that I chose. All right, y'all, this is what's left of my cream cheese filling after experimenting two other times. <laughs> so I'm only putting this in about half of them. Maybe one more if I can stretch it. It kind of reminds me of a cheese Danish filling. It's so good. Now, I have three different types of fruit fillings here. You can use homemade, store-bought, doesn't matter. You can pick any kind of filling you want. This is the filling I used for my strawberry pop charts. So check that out for how to make it. Check that uh, video out for how to make it. And this is Scott's favorite, blueberry. You can use a blueberry jam or preserves, or you can make your own. And finally, my favorite is apricot. I love anything apricot, and this is just a store-bought apricot jam. I think it's like Smucker's. And I'm loading it up, y'all. <laughs> Once these bake, they'll, they'll be even bigger, and the filling-to-bread ratio will be perfect. All right, finally, the streusel. Just load them up with as much or as little as you'd like. Just sprinkle it all over. You're going to have leftover streusel, like I said, and you can freeze it for other things. These go into a 350 Fahrenheit oven for 20 to 25 minutes or until they're golden brown just around the edges like this. Don't these look amazing, y'all? We've got to let these cool for just a little bit and then we can dig in while they're still warm. I know which one I'm going for first, the apricot, of course, and I want one with both cream cheese and apricot filling because, you know, that's how I roll. <laughs> can y'all see how soft these are? Oh my gosh. I like the inside ones the best. They're just so like tender and soft and they don't have any brown on them and I like it that way. Y'all, I am speechless really. Just make them. You'll be speechless too. Enjoy!